Hello everyone, I'm Senator Dianne Feinstein, and during my time in the Senate, it's been a great privilege to work here in Washington and also back home in California on many issues that affect our critically important water resources. And I must tell you, nothing is more difficult. I've sponsored many bills to help make certain our waterways remain healthy and vibrant. But now we're facing one of the most difficult challenges we have ever experienced in the form of invasive quagga and zebra mussels that threaten the very nature of vital water resources. Today, these mussels are spreading west with potentially greater impacts. There's no question we've got to stop them from spreading. So this is something that all of us need to take very seriously. Whether or not we fish, boat, or use our great waterways for recreation, these little mussels are dynamite. They will affect you and your pocketbook if they become established. Now it's not too late to prevent these invaders from spreading, but if we don't take action now, these mussels will spread from one area to the next as hitchhikers, on boats moved on trailers, and equipment moving between waters. If you look at one of these mussels and you figure it can produce a million additional mussels a year, you begin to know the kind of threat that they are. Zebra and quagga mussels are relatively small freshwater mussels, ranging in size from just a couple of millimeters to a maximum size of about five centimeters typically reaching sexual maturity at about two centimeters in length. Both quagga and zebra mussels are similar in appearance and share the most distinguishing characteristic, the presence of bissel threads that are used to attach to any object of their liking. No other freshwater mussel in North America has bissel threads. If you find any small attached mussel in freshwater, it spells trouble and should be reported immediately. Both mussel species reach sexual maturity at about one year of age. A single female mussel is capable of producing up to one million eggs a year with multiple spawnings. Fertilization is external and usually begins when water temperatures reach the low 50s. Fertilized eggs become free-floating planktonic larvae called veligers and remain in that state for two to five weeks while they accumulate calcium and develop a shell before settling on suitable substrate. Once settled, mussels are able to detach their bissel threads and move to find better conditions before settling semi-permanently. Zebra mussels prefer to attach to hard substrate, while quagga mussels do very well settling on soft sand or silt bottoms as well. The typical lifespan for both species is four to five years, though individual zebra mussels have been found to live for more than 10 years in some cold water lakes. Dreisenid mussels are filter feeders filtering up to a liter of water per adult mussel per day, selectively consuming desirable phytoplankton that would otherwise be used by important game and food fish, while avoiding less desirable plankton species, including certain types of blue-green algae, and then depositing waste and filtered sediment as pseudofeces to the bottom. Since dreisenid mussels can occur at densities of up to 100,000 or more per square meter in some waterways, this action completely transforms the ecosystem of the host water body. This is an issue that touches everyone, not just boaters. If mussels become established in your area, it will likely result in increased fees and taxes, higher utility and food costs severe boating, swimming, and fishing restrictions, increased maintenance costs passed on to consumers, lower waterfront property values, and economic hardship for local businesses that service water-based recreation. At first, people just thought it was limited and localized sort of impact, and, but as we've seen it quickly spread, there's been some interest in trying to understand the dynamics of these populations. And one thing that's become quite clear is that no one uh, in, in Kansas is, is protected from the impacts of zebra mussels or other aquatic nuisance species. In the near shore waters, the zebra mussels aren't just taking things out of the water column, but they're in a way intercepting things before they get offshore. So we have what's considered a near shore shunt. 
The increase of these harmful algal bloom has been directly linked to the selective filtration of dreisinids. These dreisinids process a lot of water, whether it's quagga mussels or zebra mussels. And as they do, these big, large nuisance colonies, these harmful algae like microcystis cyanobacteria, are thrown out as pseudofeces. And so over time, these mussels remove all the desirable algae and they really enhance um, the uh, undesirable algae, the harmful algal bloom. So their abundance increases tremendously. These invasive mussels promote the growth of nuisance and toxic algae populations that can affect swimming, boating, and other forms of water-dependent recreation. Colonies of living mussels and windrows of dead mussels can cover the lake bottom and beaches, making recreational use of these areas difficult, undesirable, and dangerous because of their sharp dead shells. Lingbia on the bottom will accumulate throughout the season. By August, you, there are places where you will find you know, a, a fair carpet of it on the bottom. Um, then later on in the fall, what has happened is that washes up on shore and you know, can get meter deep accumulations of it in some places, depending on how the wind's blowing. So it's very unesthetic and, and you know, shore, homeowners and people that use the shoreline really don't like it. Recreational boaters are also affected when mussels attach to the exterior surfaces of watercraft and clog internal engine cooling, raw water storage, and circulation systems, resulting in increased maintenance, operation, and repair costs. We have documented a decrease in the abundance of some fish species. We have documented a decrease in body condition of some of our sport fisheries. And so zebra mussels are not a good thing for fishermen. And it's not only fisheries, beaches, and boats that are affected. Recreational docks, boat lifts, and other equipment important to recreational boaters like navigation and mooring buoys can also become encrusted with quagga and zebra mussels, creating increased maintenance problems and decreasing the effective life of this equipment, making it difficult on commercial and recreational boaters alike. As a marina operator, we see zebra mussels forming on every structure in the marina. They form underwater, around places where, where uh, people recreate. Increased cost to us as far as maintenance goes and the maintenance of all the marine equipment, cost and time, it just goes on and on and on. The cost if we were infested by zebra mussels, uh, probably the cost to maintain things would be a concern. Uh, some other areas that not only with the marina here, uh, but other areas of lake that the Clay County takes care of, the uh, golf course operates out of here, they have a water intake. If this lake was ever infested with the zebra mussels, we would definitely lose some traffic. Uh, it would scare people away if there was an area lake that was, you know, within 30 or 40 miles that, that did not have them. Uh, we would probably lose a few to those. Uh, I would hope not, because I obviously don't want to lose any of our customers or any of our, our slip holders, but uh, I definitely think some would choose to go another area if their boats were being affected by the lake quality. Because Lake Mead is a reservoir uh, uh, and the lake levels do fluctuate, uh, one of the impacts to our visitors is, is also uh, visitor safety. Uh, we can typically see as, as the lake levels go down uh, uh, mats of quagga mussels uh, and that increases uh, calls to our rangers for medical services, uh, people cutting their feet. All of these recreational impacts have very significant negative effects on water dependent businesses, local economies, and waterfront property values. The largest issues that, are, that came about after, after the zebra mussel find was the, the questions, the, the scare. Once the word got out, it spread pretty quickly that, uh, uh, you know, that all of a sudden Smithville Lake had zebra mussels. The key to preventing quagga and zebra mussels from expanding their range and disastrous impacts throughout North America is aggressive action. There should be no doubt that the benefits from preventing their spread far outweigh the costs of implementing comprehensive prevention programs that include outreach education, watercraft interception, early detection, and rapid response planning elements. Make no mistake, this is a preventable disaster, provided we are willing to act decisively and work cooperatively. So the real problem uh, with this problem um, is that there's very little we can do about it now. Once the zebra mussels and the quagga mussels have come into our system and have taken over in this, in this sense, there's very little we can do about it. So the only thing we could have done is prevent them from coming in in the first place. Nine out of the ten lakes that we have infested in the state of Kansas could have been prevented 
uh, someone brought zebra mussels to each one of those lakes. They, it was not through natural spread. And that's the interesting thing about zebra mussels. This spread is preventable. It's not inevitable that these will be in every lake across the, across the country. Uh, we just, it just depends on how much resources we're, we're willing to dedicate to this issue. One of the critical issues that um, the general public can get involved with on prevention of zebra and quagga mussels is taking actions themselves. Um, this means cleaning, draining, and drying your boats. Government agencies do not have enough money to do everything that is necessary to prevent quagga and zebra mussels from spreading in the West. Therefore, all citizens, especially those that uh, use recreational watercraft, fishermen, boaters, these folks have got to be on board and doing everything they can to stop the spread. We're all anxious to get in the water when we're on our way to go fishing. That's all that we have on our minds. But what we need to keep in mind, what needs to be top of mind, is that these fisheries are worth preserving and they're worth protecting. And once these mussels invade our waters, they're going to be everywhere. So spending a small amount of money right now on prevention is, is worth a pound of cure later. And so the inconvenience today is well worth preserving a fishery we might not have tomorrow. All I can say is don't move a mussel because there is just, they multiply so fast and prevention is going to be costing you way less than it would cost if you're going to have to keep up with the maintenance and we've definitely seen that. So we need volunteerism. We, we, we can't emphasize that enough. It's vital that we have that. So anybody that lives out there on, on a lake or, or they recreate or they use those systems, uh, join your local lake association and and participate and encourage them to, to, to do monitoring at your ramps, your boat launches. I really applaud the West for the way their attention they're putting on prevention and keeping the boats out. That's the way to go. You got you spare nothing to keep these muscles out of your legs, absolutely. Every individual and water-dependent enterprise is affected when zebra and quagga mussels become established because we all depend on water. So even if you don't boat, fish, or recreate on your local waterway, you need to be aware of this threat and do what you can to help prevent their spread and control their impacts on water supply, power production, food production, and the thousands of other things that we've come to rely on from a safe, reliable, and economical supply of fresh water. It's vitally important that the limited resources available to combat the mussel problem in North America be maximized. Minimizing the impact of these invaders on our lives and pocketbooks will require a team effort. Please do your part and stop aquatic hitchhikers. <laughs>